In this video, we are going to have a look at the sine and cosine rule, and also the area of a triangle. Now, this is a very important concept for uh, all IB Maths exams. They usually have these types of questions uh, somewhere in the exam, so it's a concept that we need to know. Okay, so when we first learnt, when we first looked at triangles, we would have looked at right angled triangles. And if we wanted to work out the angles in right angled triangles or the side lengths, we could have used Sokotoa, which is sine, cos, and tan, or Pythagoras. But then we moved on to non right angled triangles, like the one we have here. And to work out various angles inside of our triangle and side lengths on the outside, we need some formulas. And that's what the cosine rule and sine rule are. They are the formulas that help us find angles and side lengths of non right angled triangles. So this is my blank triangle here. I'm going to give these some angles and I'm going to change it throughout this video to do a few different examples. So let's start off with, if this angle here was, let's say 55 degrees, and this one here was, I'll use 48 degrees, and we knew this side length here was 12 centimeters, and we want to find this side length here, X. Okay. We are given enough information because we are given two we are given two angles and we know one side length and we want to find the other side length. If we have two angles and a side length and we want to find another side length, we need to use the sine rule because the sine rule says if in a triangle you take any side length and divide it by sine of its opposite side length, so the A and the capital A are linked. The lowercase a means a side length and the capital A means the opposite angle. This is equal to another side length over the sine of its opposite angle. And they have this equal C as well. It just demonstrates that if we take any side length and divide it by sine of its opposite, you can make it equal to another side length. So you only need to use two of these when you use the sine rule. So I'm going to say that sine or A, uh, A, I'm going to use 12, so 12 over sine of its opposite, which will be 55 degrees. This will be equal to another side length, which will be X over sine of its opposite side length, which would be 48 degrees. And I have an equation here where X is my only variable. I can solve for X, which is my side length. And I can do that just by multiplying the sine 48 up on the other side. So 12 multiplied by sine of 48 over sine of 55, this will equal X. And if we can do this on our calculator, we can solve our answer. So I'll just quickly do it. Now we need to be in degrees because the angles that we are using here are in degrees. So make sure we are in degrees mode. So I'm in radians here, so I'll just change to degrees. Okay, now we have degrees. So X was, let's set up our fraction, 12 times sine of 48 over sine of 55. Okay, so X is 10.9, the three significant figures. X would be 10.9 centimeters. Okay, so we use the sine rule if we have two angles, one side length, and we want to find another side length. I'll change this now. What if... Okay, I'll give this one now a different one. So this was given. Let's say this was 10 centimeters, and we wanted to find theta. So now we want to find an angle. Well, still, we have two side lengths and one angle and we want to find another angle, we will once again use the sine rule because the sine rule has two of both and we can solve for one of them. So what we would do there is we can actually say 12 over sine of 55 will be equal to 10 over sine of theta and we want to solve for theta. Now what you'll notice here is it might be a little bit tricky to solve for, for, uh, for theta as it's currently on the denominator. But what we can do is we can actually flip both of these fractions and it will become sine of 55 over 12 is equal to sine of theta 
over 10 and that makes it easier because we can simply multiply the 10 up. 10 times sine of 55 over 12 is equal to sine theta. Now what I did there by flipping both sides, uh, you can do that if, as long as you do it to both sides of, a, of an equation. And in some textbooks you might see this sine rule actually flipped. It might have all of the sine A and sine B and sine C on top and the A, B, C on bottom, which is perfectly fine. So uh, you can use either of them. Now to solve for theta here, we need to go sine to the negative one and we need to put all of this in here. So we can do that in our calculator and we would solve for theta. Okay, so that's using the sine rule. I will show you the cos rule. And the cos rule is useful if we have three side lengths. So let's have a look at the cos rule. The cos rule here is useful if you have three side lengths, for example, C, A, and B, and only one angle. So if you have two of them given, and the angle is given, and you want to find a third side length, we would use this first cosine rule equation up here. An example of that, okay, let's put in a value here. Let's say we want to find X, and notice in this equation, the one that we want to find, which will be C, we need the opposite angle. So this one needs to be given. So this might be, let's say 60 degrees. And if we, if we have two side lengths and an angle and we want to find a third side length, that is when we use the cosine rule. The sine rule wouldn't help us here to find another side length. So we would say x squared is equal to the other two lengths squared. So 10 squared plus 12 squared minus two times those two side lengths multiplied by cos and we have the opposite angle. And then you would simply just type this into your calculator and you would get some number for x squared and then we just take the square root of whatever that is. Okay, so the cos rule is useful if there are three side lengths involved. You might not have all three, uh, but the sine rule is only when you have two and two. And the other cosine rule is actually the same. This, this cosine rule here is the same as this one here. They've just been rearranged. And this one, the second one is useful if you are given three side lengths and you want to find some angle, you can use the rearranged cosine rule to find any angle if you are given those three side lengths. Okay, and finally, the area of a triangle. The area of a triangle, we use this last formula down here. Now this is a half AB sine C. So all that means is if we have two side lengths, which would be our A and B, and we have angle C, so let's think about where angle C would be. If this is side length A and B and C, angle C would be this one. So what this formula says is if you have two side lengths and you have the angle between them, we can calculate the area. So for our example up here, the area of our triangle would simply be a half multiplied by our two known side lengths, 10 and 12, multiplied by sine of the angle between, between 10 and 12, which would be 60. And we would simply type this into our calculator. Okay, so this is a brief overview of the sine, cosine, and area of a triangle rule. Uh, as a quick summary, the sine rule, it has two side lengths and two angles, so you'll be given three of these, and you want to find the fourth. The cosine rule equation has three side lengths and one angle, so you'll be given usually three of those, and you want to find the fourth. So it's just a bit of practice about trying to determine which rule you want to use. And finally, the area of a triangle, all you need is two side lengths, and the angle between them, and you can calculate the area. Now there are a few questions uh, that the IB typically asks where it discusses an ambiguous case. Uh, that's when there could be multiple answers for uh, theta if you use the sine rule. So I encourage you to practice a few questions in the question bank, and you'll come across a question where it says find the possible values for, for theta, and you might need to link that to the unit circle. So I encourage you to practice those. Okay, good luck.